four chicken coop designs that I built myself. What did I do right? What did I not do right? <laughs> Over the years, I've built four different chicken coops and I've added on to the first two. So kind of technically I've built six coops. This coop behind me, the original part with the two windows on it was our, our first coop and it's literally in our front yard. And the reason for that is when we moved here, there's a, a dog paddock um, run right on the front of the house and there were all kinds of wild critters here. We had stray dogs wandering around, raccoons, possums, we had squirrels in the attic, all kinds of rat snakes crawling all over the place. Sherry really enjoyed that. And um, <laughs> so we thought to be safe, we would put our chicken coop in that run right in the front yard. So it would be close to the house and protected with the, the chain link fence. And we were just planning on having a handful of chickens. So I built the, the first part and it's about five by seven. I wanted it so I could put one piece of plywood on the floor so I'd have a solid floor with no seams. And I built it up off the ground because originally the chickens were gonna stay in the coop and in the run. I built a, a PVC run that's, that's four feet high, so I had four foot poultry netting on it. And then I built, I added on a little lean-to with some old galvanized roofing that I had. And then the chicken coop, and I built it up off the ground so that the chickens would be able to go underneath in bad weather. And in the winter time, I put stapled up plastic around it. Well, of course, that was great for the chicken design and again, because it's in our front yard, we painted, painted it the nice red color and I put the white trim on it, which was kind of pricey. Finishing wood is, is pretty expensive. And I bought really expensive black good hardware so that it, it would look nice in the yard. And then the, the nesting box is on the front side so you just lift up the lid to, to get the eggs out. But the issues, the things that aren't so good, is I thought about the chickens. The run is only four feet high, which is great for chickens, but when I want to go in there, I have to walk all hunkered down and bent over, which is no fun for my legs and my back. And the coop is up, so it's a big step to get into the coop. And then because of the size of the coop, it's only about five feet high inside. And then with the, with the roosts that are in there, it's, it's a real pain in the rear end to, to clean it out and everything. Now something to keep in mind, please, is these are real working coops. So there, when you look at that one, that one's a good five years old now. And the guinea fowl like to sit on the, the windows right there and roost. So it's messy and it's, again, it's five years old, so it's showing its age. So things are dirty and dusty and icky and nasty and chicken poopy. So these are not coops that you're going to see in the magazines at the newsstand. So <laughs> please keep that in mind. <laughs> We're out here living happy, fun, loving, and carefree and, and dirty. <laughs> so, so anyway, cleaning the coop is a, is a real rigmarole. So, you know, I learned my lesson on that coop. And then, of course, we were going to start out with just a few chickens laying eggs just for us. And we, our first purchase from one of the big hatcheries, and we like the hatchery. I'm not, you know, I'm not picking on them or anything. But we ordered, um, I think the first order was eight Easter eggers, and one of them ended up being a rooster. So then we got an incubator, and you know how that goes with chicken math, and pretty soon we had more chickens. So I added on an addition. That right there, I added that on. And that's about, I guess four by five or so. That's the guineas. Gotta love guinea fowl. Quiet guys! <laughs> wow, that worked. <laughs> and uh, so I added that on so that we could house more chickens in that. So this is our main coop, our first coop that we built, and then of course we added right on. 
So the lesson there is build your coop thinking of your needs too and build it bigger than you think that you're going to need it so that you have more room. All right, let's go on to coop number two. All right, this is coop number two and we built it because Sherry brought home some silkies so they needed their own little run and coop. So I built this this first part that, that's closest to me in the in the shot here. And it's just a little coop. It's like two by four. And then of course we love the silkies and they're our favorite chickens now. So then I, I added onto that another section. So again, I built the coop the size that I thought that I needed it, just small, and then I ended up having to add on to it. And this is in our that same run. The, the coop that we were just looking at is, is right over there. And now this coop is here in, in the other side of, of the run. And the, the two PVC runs connect together end to end. So it's kind of U-shaped. So I built that and then I added on to that. And now we use this coop today. It's kind of our, our nursery coop where when we hatch chicks, this is where we put them. And having this coop small and just having to lean in the door because it's so tiny, it's not a big deal. It's fine to have a really small coop when you want to use it just for chicks or if you live in a, a city or a subdivision, a, you know, in the suburbs, and you can have just a few, four, five, six hens to lay your eggs, a small coop like this would work fine for that. All right, let's go way out back to coop number three. If you're enjoying these videos while we're walking out to the other coop, consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. And I think you'll find the upcoming videos really interesting. So here's coop number three, and it's about 250 feet or so from the house out and back. We have five acres of property and it's kind of L-shaped. It's it's you know like a long the house is at the top of the L and then it goes to the back and then it it, it veers off a little bit around the corner so it's sort of L-shaped and so I built this coop next and what I did this time what I learned from from building the other two coops is this coop is on cement blocks and it's it's lower to the ground so it's easier to step up into I did put, since it's 250 feet, it's so far out away from the house, I put a, a real out door, outside opening, outside hinged steel door that I, that I bought. That was, that was kind of pricey, but I wanted a real door on there. A uh, couple windows that we just picked up, they're old, they're actually double hung windows from an old house, and I put those in there, and then some other windows up top, and you can see if you look up above the door, right in the center, you can see a, a solar light that I put on there. And I made a video about doing that solar light. One of these corners up here, <laughs> over my head. And um, so this coop is eight by 16. So it's much, much bigger. And it's built with OSB board. And then I used a Thompson stain seal on it. And I used regular, plywood three-quarter inch flooring inside so the the floor the joists are pressure treated because they're on cinder blocks close to the ground with a, a nice solid floor and then two by four walls and I built it and it has a just a slanty shed roof I built it up high so the hot air and the moisture would get up away from the chickens when they're on their roosts so they don't have problems in the winter time good ventilation and so the top windows stay propped open all the time and that and then there's it's it has a center room so when you open up that big steel door there's a room in the middle and I keep garbage cans with chicken feed in there and then there's poultry netting and then a door and then there's two sides and then two runs and I built the runs back here with two by four I put pressure treated two by four on the ground and then I ripped two by fours in half because it's just poultry netting. And I built the sides and I built it six foot tall this time. I used six foot poultry netting because so that way I can walk around inside there without, you know, four foot is too short. So we use six. And 
Then I built some lean-tos with, and I had to buy a new galvanized roof, and so the chickens can be outside and be protected. The issue we have out here, because we're so far from the house, is, you know, we can't run electricity, so we have the solar lights, and lugging food and water out here is, is kind of a, of a hassle. And we have to be careful with the hawks. If we let these chickens free range, especially in the fall and the winter time when the, the trees have lost their leaves, we, we we've, have a big issue. And Bonnie, our blue healer, and our cats, our barn cats and that, they don't come out here unless I'm out here. They, they don't just wander back from the house this far. So I have to be really careful. And even now in the summertime, if I, you know, we let the chickens out, I usually let them out at like two or three in the afternoon so they can roam around. And even then, we probably lose one a month because a hawk just gets them. So that's, you know, the issue with the coop being so far from us and the house way out in the back of the property is it's a great coop. And I love the two by four runs that I can walk around in. One error that I did make, make on this coop is the runs, I put the pressure treated two by fours on the ground and then framed in the two by fours ripped in half to make the, the sides, and then I put up the poultry netting. I didn't think about the fact that chickens scratch, so they scratch the dirt out, and then it's really damp here. That's one of the issues with this coop back here in the woods. Even though I cleaned from where we are, from the camera here, up, this was sort of scrubby and wooded, and I, and I cleaned it out, is it's really wet here. So the poultry netting along the the chickens kick out the dirt, and then the poultry netting rots and, and rusts and corrodes. So I'm actually having to go, and I started, I need to get it finished, is standing two by fours on their edge around the bottom so I have more surface that's up higher off the ground to staple the poultry netting to. All right, so that's coop number three. Let's go check out coop number four. This is coop number four, and it's eight by eight, and it's the same general design as the coop that we just looked at. It's on cinder blocks, and it has, this one has plywood walls instead of the OSB. And Sherry's favorite colors are, are purple and yellow, so I painted the, the door purple, and I built this door, so it's purple and the, I used yellow trim because this one is closer to the house. It's just the other side of the garden. And it's tall enough that I can walk around inside, but it's not crazy tall. The one out back is actually 10 feet tall on the front wall. It's an eight foot wall with two foot more. And this one is just you know regular, regular height. It's about eight foot in the center and about six on the sides. It has a, a normal pitch. It's got the window on the front. I do have two framed in spots for more windows, but I haven't put those in yet. And this one is divided in half, similar to Coop 3. It has just a little room inside this door where I can keep a, a can of feed. And then it has two little doors and it has poultry netting down the middle. And we have our silkies on one side and, and golden sea brights on the other side. And then the runs go out parallel on the back. This is a nice design. It's a cute little, you know, eight by eight foot print. So you just need two pieces of plywood on the inside. An error that I made on this one is I tried to skimp and buy a thinner gauge of plywood. And then with the floor on two foot centers, so I have a, a two by four, well, a two by six or two by eight on the outside in the middle and then one down between at, at two foot. So there's one, two, three, four, five, is the floor was awfully saggy as I was walking around in there. And I'm thinking over time, over a year or two or three, this is never gonna hold up. So I ended up having to put a second sheet of plywood, you know, the uh, turn the other direction over the floor. So don't skimp on your flooring in your coop. And on all of our coops, the, the ones out in the front yard, in the run, which we're trying, we want to get moved to right behind where the camera is. 
is, is our goals. We want to get them out of the front yard and, and take that run down. So you can see the runs on the back side of the 8x8 eight eight coop, my, my last coop that we built. And the, the two runs, Silky's on one side and the Golden Seabright's on the other side. Now again, keep in mind, this is a working real chicken farm and it's not pretty like in the magazines. We've had two days of rain finally after 19 days of no rain. And we've got a little bit of a, of a sunny moment here. So I jumped out to, to do this for you so you could see how we do our chickens. So everything's a little bit muddy and a little bit dirty, not like the magazines. So think about your coop designs, design it for the chickens, but design it for yourself too because you got to think about getting in and out of there to, to clean and how you're going to get the eggs that the chickens lay, whether they're going to go outside in a run or whether you're going to let them free range. And what I was going to say a moment ago that I couldn't think of is our chickens... Bonnie, what are you doing? Quit digging. Our chickens... You know, we turn them out. We have some that free range in, in the yard, the ones that are out front. I let them out first thing in the morning because Bonnie keeps an eye on them. And we have the guinea fowl in the yard too. And they're really good watchdogs. And the silkies and the seabrights, they stay in their runs. We don't let them wander around. They'd be too easy of a prey for the, for the predators and they're all locked securely in the coops at night. The little chicken doors that go up and down. I do like a barn check and put everybody to bed and make sure everybody's safe and sound. That's why you want a good solid plywood floor and solid walls so that possums and coons and, and rat snakes and things can't get in and, and hurt your, your chickens. So the big coop that's out back the big brown one that's 10 feet tall, those chickens all get locked inside it at night. So the runs only have to be a poultry netting because the runs are just to keep the chickens contained. They're not, and it, it keeps the hawks, you know, from getting into them. But real predators, you know, uh, uh, dogs or coyotes, raccoons, even possums, they had poultry netting would barely slow them down. But again, it's only to keep the chickens secure during the day. So if you live in a place where you have serious predator issues, you're probably going to use hardware cloth. And all of our coops have hardware cloth on the windows in any place that we think might be a weak spot. We do use the heavy-duty hardware cloth. And it's stapled in with, with big giant staples. So it's all about living happy, fun-loving, and carefree with your chickens. So you always hear them clucking and chirping. And, you know, share this with a friend. If you know somebody that's thinking about building a coop, if you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Think about subscribing. Subscribe on the little button over here. And watch another video. Great. Thanks.